15 to 20 years ago, we decided to resurrect and try and save um, vineyards older than 35 years in South Africa. And part of that process, we decided to uh, preserve our oldest vineyards by way of making clean planting material from them. This is the first time it's happened in this country and it was actually a lovely process. And we decided to choose uh, a variety of uh, vineyards, very old vineyards, uh, all over the country to take cuttings from them and Vititech, in collaboration with the Old Vine Project, clean them up from all known viruses uh, through a, a very um, scientific process. Yes, uh, quite a couple of years back, Rosa um, came to us and said she was involved in selection in the selection process for identifying old vineyards. Uh, the reason for that was that the old vineyards were making w uh, wines of a certain quality and they were interested in that. And she um, came to us and asked us if we can make a couple of selections uh, for certain varieties that were planted in these old vineyards. And that's what we did. We made a couple of selections and we had it go through a virus elimination process and now we have a new clones available that were selected from all these old vineyards that's now available for the uh, broader wine industry for people that's interested in planting these selections. So the benefits involved for new selections always is uh, the, the diversification of plant material so you have new clones and there's a potential for the new clones to make a wine of a certain quality or something different. Um, if you have 20 uh, Chenin Blanc clones and all 20 Chenin Blanc clones make the same sort of a wine and there's no point in having 20 Chenin Blanc clones. You want 20 Chenin Blanc clones that each brings something different and has different um, personalities expressed in the wines. Okay, so the virus elimination process is a, it's, a, it's, it's all about taking a selection or making a, a cutting of a vine that you selected and putting it through a growing process. And so the growing process, it's, it's 100 days and you put the, the new plant that you, you rooted and it grows under a certain temperature for 100 days and it's a very fast growing plant and the, the theory behind it is it grows so fast that the virus cannot keep up. And then we take the very tip of the growth point we cut that off and we make a new plant and then in theory that plant would be free of any viruses. It does get tested afterwards and if it's still got some viruses in it, it goes through that whole process again. That's both the cyan bit and also the rootstock bit. Okay, so the propagation process starts with a new clean plant that we house in our nucleus facility. From there we take uh, cuttings or our buds and we regraft it on uh, the rootstocks we've planted beforehand. So what's going to happen at Peter's Clip is we're going to plant some rootstocks and we will collect all the buds here from the different clones that were selected of the Chenin Blanc and each row will get a new clone regrafted or air grafted on the rootstock that's been planted this year. And so here we are today um, looking at planting a, a heritage mother block uh, through Vititech. Yeah, well, when I came then in March, uh, I, I, I met you on here on the, on the farm with the Shannon block and I saw the block was quite neglected. neglected. So uh, we had a chat about interplants and so on and then um, he showed me the old uh, Palomino block. I found Rosa because uh, she's with the old vine project and the heritage vines which uh, we at Vititech had cleaned up or well, still busy cleaning up a few years back and up till now. Peter's Slip is situated 230 kilometers from Cape Town on top of the De Berg mountain near Klein William on the Cape West Coast. The arable land um, consists of sandy loam soil with underlying layers of gravel or clay. The average rainfall varies between 400 and 600 millimeters, uh, which is about double the rainfall that's received by the lower lying areas in, in this region. 
at an altitude of more than 600 meters above sea level and a mere 37 kilometers from the cold Atlantic Ocean, Peter's Clip regularly experiences daytime temperatures as much as 10 degrees Celsius cooler than its surrounds. During the summer, um, we also experience much colder evenings and during the winter we have got, we've got much colder minimum temperatures. In 2006 we were 100% organic certified on both farms. Organic farming is considered to be far more sustainable as conventional farming. The lack of pesticides and wider variety of plants enhances biodiversity and results in a better soil quality and reduce pollution from fertilizers or pesticides runoff. Uh, we've got about 600 hectares of conservation area that we pride ourselves in. Uh, we also, um, in the last couple of years, have started, to started seeing a huge difference in our soil quality. We've got earthworms in our soils that we haven't had for many years. The more biodiverse you farm, the more natural predators you create that helps with, the, with all the, the insects um, on the farm as well. Our philosophy of biodiversity farming is in line with the philosophy of the old vine project. We decided on Peter's Clip to propagate uh, planting material from those cuttings that, was, that were cleaned up. We decided on this farm because it's just a spectacular site. It is uh, not far away from um, Skurfberg, where the first vines that formed part of the Old Vine project were discovered um, 15 years, 16, 17 years ago and uh, various winemakers make wine from that block now. It's mainly Semio and Shannon. We decided on a, a Peter's Clip because the owner and the, and the workers and the people on this farm are very enthusiastic about the, the whole uh, project. The soils are fantastic. It's red, red sandy soils on a, a bank of red clay underneath. And if you could maybe notice in the background, it's quite close to the sea. Uh, the cold currents uh, next to Lambert's Bay. Uh, it is in the afternoons, as I'm speaking, I'm feeling a cool breeze from the sea. In the afternoons, when other areas are quite warm, I feel the cool breeze from the sea. And that's exactly what, what vines like. They'll probably plant it in the long run uh, dry land, uh, but because of the altitude and the proximity to the sea, um, I think they'll do well. The process of cleaning up vines is very important because uh, like everywhere in the world, in South Africa more pronounced because we have such an extreme climate, um, leaf roll virus impacts not only on the quality but also on the quantity of the grapes. We're trying to uh, cut that out by uh, promote, uh, propagating clean material and planting it here on this farm far away from other sites where there is leaf roll virus so we hopefully will be able to plant clean and stay clean here. That is one of the principles of the Old One Project, is to plant to grow old. If we plant virus-free material from some of our oldest vineyards in South Africa, and we farm them to stay clean, in other words, not to get leaf roll and other known viruses, we could make a better wine. The vineyard will be surrounded by um, vast areas of indigenous fine moss, uh, areas that's filled with flowers and, and indigenous trees and lots of wildlife. We've just walked through the fine moss areas and saw um, evidence of porcupines, uh, deer, baboons, all sorts of forms of life. So it's a very biodiverse system. The farmer and the people on the farm are quite um, linked to organic farming or biodiversity in their, in their surrounding areas. And that links in nicely with the whole philosophy of the Olvine project, to plant as close to nature as you possibly can, can, rather than to dominate nature, to follow nature and go with nature, as we are only one species on this earth the human beings forming part of a bigger cycle. And I really hope this is going to be a successful project. And I say thank you to the owners 
and the people on the farm that are supporting the Old Line project so nicely. Thank you.